What's going on? Move the Mouse here back in City Skylines with the next episode of the How To series. And this one is absolutely my favorite milestone to hit in any city. Close second would be when you finally unlock monuments. But this one puts us on such a path. One of my favorites to talk about. And that is the Big Town Milestone. On this map, we hit it at 7,500 population. Depending on what map you're building on, that number may be different. But the milestone names and things that you're unlocking will be the same. Why I love this one so much is it gets you metro and it gets you high density commercial, residential, and office zones. And this is such a tremendous step in the growth of any city. Now I want to show you a couple things. I did two little things offline. I know people, some people don't like when I do that, but sometimes this has to be done. I added a couple blocks here. Honestly, nothing that you couldn't come up with on your own. I just basically extended out the industrial zone a little bit to fill in some of the demand that we had to get us on that growth towards 7,500. And then I did this area right here to add some commercial to our otherwise very residential heavy area of town. But that was all that I did. Again, nothing that, you know, you can just build some straight roads and some grid coming off of that artery that was already there. And essentially that's how I got up to 7,500 population. But now that we've got high density, let's come over here and we're gonna do one more highway exit. I think this is actually too close together for the purposes of designing a really effective city, uh, but we could probably make it work. So let's come in here. We'll delete these power lines to get them out of the way for now. Plus, I think we're spreading power just fine. We may need actually to move that one piece back. Let's do that. So that's connecting the industrial area to everything else. Actually, no, I take it back. That would have spread just fine over here. And then everything else would have been connected. So we're, we're pretty good there. The only power lines we need are to get to this isolated zone up here. But now that we've made a little bit of room, let's kind of come in the middle of these two exits. We're going to drop in another T intersection just to keep things nice and simple. Uh, let's see if that was enough. Go over to roads. T intersection just enough is that like perfect let's see no we got to delete one more segment that's so close so we'll delete that one we'll drop it a t right here just to make this connect a little bit better let's delete a couple segments we'll go to our highway tool and curve and just curve it ever so slightly there's not too abrupt of a bend. We'll get this piece connected also. So now we've got another interchange on the highway. I'm going to go over to six lane roads. And I like to do a little decorative on the entrance into the city. So I'm going to come in right in here in between these two roads. You can kind of see those, the nodes lining up with the highway segment there. I'm going to go straight tool and I'm going to come out, I don't know, 30 units before we do an intersection. And now we can hook that in. If we do highway and a trick I did in a previous episode, we'll do curved. Come almost all the way down before we hook it in and do the same thing over here. And then we'll reverse this direction so that we've got a way on and off the highway. And now we can switch over to two lane roads if we want, smaller roads from here. Now, because this road is wider than a two lane road, I'm gonna come up 12 units to make sure that we have enough space for zoning. We could even build this all the way back to the highway if we wanted. And now that we're back to two lane roads, we can do really tight zoning in here if we want. You can come out a little bit further, say another 12 units, if you want the ability to run a pedestrian path or bike paths kind of in between the zone, you could do that. Now, I want to give people a little bit of options for getting around, so we'll do a couple cross streets here and there. In this case, I'm going to do three-way intersections, though, and that will minimize some of the traffic. Something like that. And over here, on the back of the industrial zone, 
Let's see how this lines up. It actually lines up pretty good. We can commit that to office space. Because offices don't mind the pollution. Residents definitely do. And if we wanted to, we could even connect this like that. Now, this might encourage truck traffic to come through here. So if we want to prevent that, we could do a little district right there and just say no heavy traffic right here. So policies, select it, go over to the city planning tab and say heavy traffic ban. So people that live here could go to industry for work, but trucks will not come through here to get to commercial areas. They're going to go out to the highway, force them out this way and come in through the highway, which should be serviced a little bit better. I'm going to bring this down another 30, link up with there, and we'll carry that six lane road down this way some more. Nice thing about these is if we have a left hand turn up here. like so that's gonna help break up these lanes see the center lane is always gonna go straight right lane can go right or straight left lane can go left or straight and that will help speed things up a little bit now I thought it was part of mass transit but it might also be part of the free game update that came out when mass transit came out if we go to the inspector tool you have the ability to control intersections. Now on PC, it's a little different how you get there. You, with no tool selected, would click on the name of the street and then there's a junctions tab that pops up and that will actually let you control intersections that way. If you're on console, go to the inspector tool, hold Y or triangle and go to intersections. And now you can change the behavior of intersections. If we don't want a stoplight, if we want stop signs instead, we can do that. We can choose which way we're stopping traffic. Now. For the most part, we don't want to stop traffic on these main avenues. We want to stop traffic on the side avenues. So let traffic flow where it's going to be heaviest and then make the side streets stop instead. And we can do the same thing when it comes to these T intersections. Let the traffic flow on the main road. The traffic on the others should be a little bit lighter. So especially where we have T's, we can stop it on the upright and do something like that just to keep traffic flowing. Traffic lights can actually slow things down quite a bit. So anytime you have more than a two lane road intersecting with another road, it's automatically going to create traffic lights. So do keep that in mind and come into your inspector tool and manage those a little bit from time to time. Now, if I do something like this, right, and I, I set up all these stop signs and then I decide to build another road off of that, like so it doesn't you know it doesn't know what I wanted to do there so you, anytime you add junctions you have to then come back in and potentially modify your stop signs or stop lights but that is a thing that's built into the game unfortunately I don't think that's an option if you're on switch so unfortunately you'll have to just do the best that you can to manage traffic without managing the actual junctions themselves so we've got a bunch of space planned out here. And let's do a couple things with that. So we've already banned heavy traffic in this area. We've seen what green cities looks like from a low density perspective. I want to do some green cities high density. Now, if you don't have green cities, that is totally fine. You'll just get regular high density buildings. But I want to do a couple things over here. So let's actually paint a couple districts so that we can kind of see some of these things in action. So we want to keep the heavy traffic off of this road. But maybe we could also make this, I'm going to switch to the small tool. And you'll magnetically snap to roads. And this small tool makes it a little easier to paint exactly where I want to go. But let's say we want Belmont Heights just to not have heavy traffic. Uh, I don't want to prevent them from traversing on that main road though. So let me clean that up. And we'll do all this along this road. We can say no heavy traffic through there. I 
I don't believe that affects offices. We are going to do some of this in office space, but it would definitely affect commercial. Now, if we go over to residential specializations, we can do the green cities self-sufficient building specialization. And when we zone it, if we do high density, we'll get to see what some of the high density zoning looks like for green cities. Now over here, closest to the industry, I'm going to do a bit of a buffer zone with office space. I'm going to fill all that in. We'll get some offices moving in. We'll do that. Heck, we'll even do there too. Now along the main strip, I'm going to define commercial and we can do that four boxes back on the roads. So that'll give us a nice commercial strip right there. Maybe we can even do this road as commercial and we'll fill in the rest with high density. And we're going to see kind of a mixture of zones here. So I want to do a couple things. Back over on the districts, we've defined that as green cities and heavy traffic ban. We've got some office in there. We can also go to office specialization and create IT clusters. Now IT clusters are going to be very tall buildings, but that's something that you can kind of paint on a district. I'm going to show you what the regular offices look like. And then over here, I want to do kind of an IT cluster. So let's get a couple roads set up. just so you can see a little bit of that difference. And we'll zone this as office. And then we'll paint a district over here and tell, district, and tell this district to be a little bit different. In this case, we want all this zoning rather than standard office to be IT cluster. And you'll see how much taller those buildings are. Now we'll go ahead and hit play. We've got a decent amount of money in the bank and we've painted some high density residential, commercial, and office space. So all the new stuff that we've unlocked that should fill up pretty quick. We can see offices already popping up over here, which is great. Now, these are adhering to whatever style the map is on, because we haven't defined anything different for the office space. The residents are conforming to the green city's policy and commercial doesn't have any specialization. So it'll just be default commercial specialization. Uh, let's get watered over here before I forget any longer. You can see we've got kind of European style buildings here coming in in the commercial space that's on this strip. They have a, a very different feel from say North American style. Now, if you are just building on a map without any settings, you're going to build buildings that are part of that default theme. So we've got a European themed map here. Let's pause it. Let's go back over to our district tool and inspect this district. Actually, you know what? Let's make a new district right smack in the middle. Just so we can kind of see the separation. So we've created a new district on this street. Let me bulldoze this building. Select a district and this icon right here is building style for the district. Now, if I switch this over to North American, it will bulldoze any buildings that are there and then they'll get rebuilt in a new style if there's demand. So try and do that before you really commit to people moving into the zone. But I will give this a minute or two to catch up so that we can see 
the European style next to the regular commercial style. So bear with me just a minute. Let's, uh, let's let this time lapse. Let's let some things move in, create some more demand, and then we'll start to see the contrast in the building types when you define different themes for the zones. So we've already got a couple buildings cropping up. You can see that the European style is kind of more of like a row house almost. Whereas if we go back down here, the commercial buildings that are more North American kind of look more like a you know an office building you'd find in an American city. So lots of different things that you can do with a style. Lots of different things that we can do now with heights. So, and this is something that I wanted to show you is that depending on how you want to build your city, you can make it a little bit more realistic if things kind of gradually get taller and taller off into the distance. And by that, I mean, like, look at any city. I'm, I'm born and raised around Boston, so we'll use Boston as an example. If you drive in down 93 or 95 into the city, you'll have suburbs and smaller houses, smaller commercial buildings, and eventually those might be high density and they'll get a little bit larger and then different density types like the green cities buildings might be even taller than that and then even taller than everything basically except for some of the uniques are the it cluster buildings and generally your really tall buildings in a town will be focused in one area you know kind of a tighter financial district like boston like new york um, so you can kind of make a more realistic looking city if you approach it like that off towards the edges of your map or the low density smaller houses and then gradually getting larger and larger until you have a really tall downtown area and then feathering off again on the other side. So if you're building for realism, that's definitely something to consider. While we're staring at those not having water icons, let's give people what they need. And we'll just cover the water for the rest of this block. And another thing that's worth mentioning is as these buildings level up, they will get taller. So if you want to kind of control that height gain over different zones, there is a policy that you can apply called high rise ban. And we could do that on a per district basis if we wanted to. And basically what that does is that prevents buildings from leveling up all the way. So it does reduce your tax income, but it lets you create these kind of staged stair step cities, which honestly are more realistic. If you look at kind of any major city, it's downtown area, the, the financial district is going to be the tallest thing. And then it gradually gets lower and lower as you move towards the outskirts of the city. So the high rise ban can be really useful. Apply that in particular districts for that more natural look and feel. We're not going for, you know, hyper-realism in this city. This is all about how-tos. If you want to see kind of a more realistic city, my builds have gotten better and better through the various seasons of the Let's Plays. So check out some of those if you want some, uh, you know, some more on the design side of things. Um, but this is just kind of a, a quick tip that I wanted to drop in in reference to those new buildings that you unlocked. Again, we've unlocked high-density residential office and commercial. And you can actually see... The difference between the the zone types when you do themes so european versus north american and so on so lots of ways you can vary the look of your city one problem that i want to talk about which happens invariably when you first stamp down office as soon as it's available is the not enough educated workers problem because we've unlocked at the exact same time university now i mentioned this in an earlier video if you have green cities you have two options University, 75,000 will support 4,500 students. The more expensive, friendlier to the environment version is 90,000, only supports 4,000 students. So, something to keep in mind. We do need, though, some university coverage somewhere. We can actually get it in. That may not be too bad. I'm just going to look for a spot to drop it in. We're not going to design a, a university campus or anything in this town. Um, one, because campuses are not part of the uh, console-based DLC yet. But also, even without that, you can kind of build some campuses that look a little bit more than just a university plot down somewhere. 
but this is a, what we need to get started. We need to educate our citizens. They did not have uh, university as an option just yet. If we go up here, we can see the availability and you can also see the coverage depending on where you are and what type of building you have selected. So elementary, we're light on. High school, we're light on. University is the only one that is really well covered. And you can see that thanks to the highway, it, it does stretch into these neighborhoods a little bit, but not all the way. So maybe we can add a second one down the road. But in the meantime, let's drop in a couple more buildings for high school here. Bulldoze some people, unfortunately. So we've got good green coverage over on this side of the map with those two high schools. Let's find a spot for one more over here. Maybe we do right there on the main drag. And everybody should be well covered high school wise. And then let's look at our elementary school coverage. So we're, we're definitely light over here. So we've got one for this area, one for this area, one for over here, which seems like it's a little bit thin. So let's see where we can get, we'll put one in right here next to the cemetery. That building was leveling up, so I didn't want to disrupt that. And then we need at least one more over here. Because these are way too far away for people to, to bother traveling to an elementary school. Let's put it kind of central here. We'll move a couple people out. But that way it's a little easier for everybody to get to. And schooling-wise, we're in pretty good shape. Everything's pretty well covered. Running into power problems. Check your budget first. Always good idea. We are at 100%, so we just need more power plants. What we do unlock very soon... Oh, nice. We did unlock it. We unlocked the solar updraft tower. And this is how I usually build my cities. I, I like kind of this staged progression. I always start out with the coal power plant. Once I have them unlocked, I go to the solar updraft tower, which are more expensive but produce a ton of electricity. And then I'll use the nuclear power plant, where is it, right here, as a jump off point to get me to the monument eventually. There's a power monument that basically gives you enough power for the entire city. You won't need it. You can crank the budget down. The solar updraft tower, though, is my favorite stepping stone in the middle. Let's see where we can cram that in, in our industry area, hopefully. Maybe we can do it right over here. Let's do it right there. Now, the nice thing about the solar updraft tower in comparison to the solar power plant, the solar power plant does not produce electricity at night. The solar updraft tower basically charges batteries and that provides power at night. So this is a fantastic option for a green city or even just a nice stepping stone to get you towards that next larger power plant that you will eventually unlock. Now, since we uh, have a ton of extra power, we'll go to info views and see that we're making three times as much as we need. We can definitely crank that budget down or another thing that we can do is let's keep the coal power plants, but let's turn them off for now. And let's see where that gets us for electricity. So we're still, pretty good. As we run out of electricity, we can turn on these power plants and eventually drop in another solar updraft tower. Usually two updraft towers will be enough to get you to nuclear. And then from there again, we'll eventually unlock the monument. But that's a topic for a much later episode. There's lots and lots to talk about, but the last thing that I want to cover in today's episode is the Metro. So Metro has its own tab over here, and there are three components that you need for a successful Metro a station, the tubes, and the stops. So again, we want to get people from where they live to where they work. So I'm going to do one kind of weird, very funky metro line through here. Let's put it right next to the bus station. So we'll throw one stop there. We'll come into the zone a bit. And let's do a stop there. So that we kind of have coverage for, you know, for these people. Come to think of it, let's let's remove that. Let's go right up this middle, just to make it a little easier for us to do our um, our pipes. I 
This is kind of Metro 1.0. I always like to do one Metro loop that gets everybody around the city to some of the major junctions. Okay. So I know some people hate the loops, but very early on, nice easy way to start. We'll eventually find a spot for a transport hub where we can bring a bunch of different forms of transportation into the center of the city. And then we can modify these routes after. But this works just like roads, except we're building them underground. So we have the straight tool by default. We can switch over to the curve tool. Kind of make these a little bit smoother rather than just 90 degree or sharp bends. You don't want the trains to turn too much, otherwise if they turn too tight, they slow down a lot. So I'm just gonna get these all connected. And now that we've got tunnels, now we can do a route. So we switch over to the Metro Line tool, and we're gonna do two routes. One going this way, stopping at each stop for now, till we revamp it later. And now here, be careful. So complete the line, and then rather than move the stop, Make sure you have it creating a new line and let's go in the opposite direction. The metro tunnels work just like roads. There are two tracks, one going in each direction. So we can have basically a clockwise route and a counterclockwise route. And that should help move some people around, at least for now, and get a little bit of the traffic off the road. Try and think about your metro station placement as kind of a top priority. You want to be in kind of these population centers or where there's a lot of people that might potentially be working like that office park. Because moving the tunnels is generally easy enough. You can bulldoze those, reconnect them in any way, add maybe a stop over here and, and have tunnels that kind of connect with each other. But moving the stations, it's a little bit more expensive and uh, requires you to you know potentially bulldoze a building so they have a very small footprint of just, what is it, two by two squares? But they move lots and lots of people around. In fact, if we look, you can see all the people pouring in and out of the metro already, which is fantastic. So we're already getting some people off the road. That is a great thing. You can see that we are having a ton of problems over here with our office space. Looks like kind of like a post-apocalyptic world already because most of them are abandoned. We don't have enough educated workers to support these jobs. So that's a really important thing to keep in mind is you unlock offices and university at the same time, but people need to go to school and that takes years. So they're not ready to fill in the workforce just yet. So if you expand office space too fast and especially IT clusters, they can run into this problem. If you do have that problem, don't worry. It probably will sort itself out as long as you have um, all the right zones kind of filled in. Yeah, keep in mind, I've kind of thrown things together in the city so we see all these different influences in a really short matter of space you have your uh, european offices your it cluster high rises green cities and european apartments and regular north american apartments so you can really kind of mix and match and uh, and give each area its own flair but generally it wouldn't be kind of just right across the street from one another like this uh, but again, we're just kind of slapping this together for the purposes of the tutorial. Hopefully you found this one informational and educational. Again, this is one of my favorite milestones for a city is unlocking the high density options as well as the metro. It really enables you to start growing uh, leaps and bounds. 
And the more your city grows, the more tax money you can rake in, and the more of the expensive, unique buildings we can start to drop in, um, which we really need to save up for, because the first wave's not too bad. They get more and more and more expensive as we kind of go up the line. So that's actually a bad example. 20,000 is not too much. 100,000, there we go. Expo Center, 125. 120 and then obviously the monuments are the most expensive so keep an eye on your budget keep trying to make money grow your city slow it's one of the best tips i can recommend if you grow too fast it's very easy for problems like traffic and education issues to get out of hand so stamp out those zones slow and really think about kind of each block or neighborhood as you're building it and make sure that it fits into the greater scheme of your city and we've hit a milestone again eleven thousand. So that's the one that we'll talk about on the next episode. Hopefully you found this video useful on your way towards building your own successful city. If you did enjoy, likes, comments, and shares all help the channel a lot and are greatly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe, hit the bell to get notifications, follow me on Twitter, and join the Discord if you want to get involved in the discussion with other fans of cities and of the channel. Until the next one, though, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.